Welcome to Talking Plant Protein. I'm Joey Thurman, and today we're talking professional performance nutrition. My friends here will report on the current and future state of this market and discuss what ingredients and aspects of performance products that are of most interest for professional athletes. I'm pleased to welcome Sri DVK, food and nutrition consultant at Chem Bazaar, James Collier, Huel's co-founder and head of Sustainable Nutrition, and Lauren Rice, strength coach and owner of Right Angle Fitness. Welcome everybody, and yeah, let's get ready to get into it, huh? Great, pleased to be here. Thanks for being here. Shridevi. Thank you for having us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, please, Absolutely. Very excited. Please give us an overview of what the current market is for plant-based nutrition professional performance. Yeah. So uh, as a market research and consultancy company who has, working, who has been working in the food and nutrition space for quite some time, we have been tracking the performance nutrition market and based on one of our recent studies, what we have seen is the overall global performance nutrition market ranges for around $23 billion globally. And uh, almost 70% of that consumption comes from the uh, demand in North America alone. So uh, initially what the market space looked like was the demand was mainly for the professional athletes or the uh, serious bodybuilders who are really into muscle maintaining uh, and all uh, kinds of uh, optimum body functioning. But in the past few years, what we have observed is that there has been an expansion of the performance nutrition market into uh, a much wider consumer space ranging from consumers who have all ranges of athletic abilities. So you have uh, a serious uh, athlete, uh, you know, who trains probably seven times a week or more. You may have somebody who's just health conscious who may train little uh, around three to four times a week. And then you may have the amateur weekend workout enthusiast. So with this expansion of the consumer base, the industry need uh, suddenly face the need to adapt uh, to adapt to the demand for uh, a, an alternatives for the dairy, dairy proteins that we've witnessed in the market. And that is how we saw the introduction of these kind of plant-based performance nutrition products. And based on our extensive research, what we were able to identify was that the global plant-based performance nutrition market ranges around $7 billion. And almost 85% of that consumption, which uh, comes to about $5.5 billion, is in the North American market alone. So the major portion, the major demand comes from the North American market. Uh, and the key products that we've seen are like, you know, the uh, alternative for protein powders, BCAA powders, then we have the RTD protein shakes. So these kind of products, are, which are, you know, generally consumed in larger volumes, were the mm -hmm. first to enter into the plant-based uh, uh, market. And then came the other products such as energy bars and, you know, other, other, other products. Uh, brands like, you know, global brands such as Optimum Nutrition, BS and Senta uh, have all been working strategically to launch these kind of plant-based alternatives to their traditional products. And then there are, you know, up and coming new brands uh, such as uh, Aloha, Vega, who are all slightly gaining footing in the market itself. Mm -hmm. So what we have seen uh, on an overall is that rice protein, soy protein and pea protein are the three main protein sources that are being used in all of these kind of products. But uh, as, as I mentioned previously, the consumer base is expanding. The demand of the consumers have been changing a lot. So there has been the development of new innovative proteins such as you find chickpea as a protein source, you find flax seeds as a protein source. So all of these kind of innovative proteins are also being uh, influenced into the market. So we have seen that Optimum Nutrition recently incorporated Sacha peanut, which is a very rare peanut protein source that they've incorporated that protein into their plant-based protein products. Glanbia has now shifted their entire portfolio of the plant-based from yellow chickpea. So this is uh, the uh, overall uh, protein, plant-based uh, protein space in the performance nutrition products. And I guess, uh, you know, the uh, other members of the panel, James and Lauren can speak much more to that because of their first-hand experience with these kind of products. 
Right, yeah, and obviously this is expanding tremendously. And don't forget, Huel yeah. is you know a good place in the market too, right, James? Um, but uh, is, is there a preferential protein source that people are going to when it's looking at plant-based protein sources? I know you mentioned chickpea and rice and there's soy and there's all sorts of different things. What's, what's the preference for uh, specifically athletes? Well, I guess I'll go ahead and, and take the lead on that. Um, Athletes are, are not really concerned about the source. They're really concerned about two things, which is their performance and their recovery. Um, when you have people that play every single day and for lack of a better term, play train uh, and they need to perform, uh, it's more important about how are they gonna recover? Um, do, will they feel sustained in terms of energy? Um, and I think then that bodes well to, well, if you have this plant-based protein source, you know, you're going to reduce your inflammation and these types of things. You're going to hopefully heal a little bit faster. They're readily absorbable and more absorbable for the human body. Um, and I mean, speaking from even my personal experience and not just people that I've worked with, um, I went, everyone that goes vegan should go vegan for a reason. For me personally, it was inflammation after knee surgery. Um, and that was when I discovered plant-based protein sources. And I did, I did hemp, um, but with a professional athlete, they're not going to really lean towards a source. What you're going to find is they're going to trust the professional that is in charge of their nutrition, whether that be the team or whether that be an individual like myself, because they're relying on their resources to educate them on something that they may not be privy to mm -hmm. because they're focused on sport performance. Yeah, and, and that's a very fair point, Lauren, right? Because you as, as a strength coach and you, you've lived it you know, yourself as well, so you're telling them what specifically to have. And some athletes want to be informed exactly what they're putting into a body. Other ones, you know, as you know, in working with movie stars too, you say, hey, drink this, eat this, and that's pretty much what they'll go to, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. Yeah. James, now how does Huel fit into this market state of the union? Okay, um, well, Huel, Firstly, is all our products are plant-based and we're all about complete nutrition. So our products provide all essential and, and some important non-essential ones that are deemed non-essential by regulations, all those, all these, all those nutrients in, um, in amounts needed for optimum nutrition. Obviously, the term optimum nutrition can be open to interpretation and it's very individual. So we've got a range of products now. But um, it's key to note also that Huel is not about just sports nutrition, performance nutrition. Our target audience, uh, our target market is every adult in the world. That's pretty big, yeah? Right. But um, we're, we're doing quite well. We're only six years old as a company. Um, and we've sold well over 100 million meals now across our range. Um, so, you know, we're not performance nutrition per se. However, we have loads of athletes from recreational to professional that enjoy and use your products as part of their plans um, and find them very useful because we've got good plant protein sources. Now, you guys, um, Lauren and 3DV were talking about the different protein sources. Well, we've got in, in our basic powder, um, which is we're now on your version three, we use pea protein and brown rice protein, but because we've got oats in there for slow release carbs and we've got flax, milled flaxseed in for omega-3s primarily, both those also provide protein. Mm. So uh, we've got that. Then we've got our black edition, which is higher in protein, lower in carbs. We've got what we call hot and savory, which is a grain based with vegetables that rather than adding cold water and drink, you add hot water and eat with a spoon. A bit more of a, people, some people were perhaps struggling a bit with the concept that Huel is food, which it is. People, people call Huel meal replacement. We're not a re replacement for a meal. We are a meal. You wouldn't say, I'm going to re replace my burger and chips tonight with pizza. You'd say I'm going to have a burger and chips or a pizza <laughs> or Huel, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're going with that. And we've got a, a more recently we've brought complete protein powder, which you know we're nutritionally complete. So you might be asking, rightly, protein's a nutrient. How could it be nutritionally complete if it's a protein? Well, we've, we've it's primarily protein, but it's got. Um, small amounts of the essential fatty acids and it's got all the vitamins and minerals in there as well as well as some phytonutrients and some other key um key ingredients as well 
That, that's great. And, and you're an athlete yourself, right? So how do you evaluate the priority and what you're consuming um, for your own uh, personal you know, goals as well? Well, I don't want anyone to get the impression I'm an elite athlete here. I'm, I'm just a <laughs> recreational guy who's been training since 16, going to the gym in different formats. Hey, once, and, well, once an athlete, always an athlete, right? Yeah. Lauren's, you know, yeah. approaching 41 years old, and that that man is pushing around sleds and doing thank all you, sorts of things too. Thank you. So, thank you. I, 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 well, <laughs> you always you always kind of add that, right? The, it's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, how do you evaluate what what you're putting into your body? Okay, well, you know. Rewind. Yeah, but prior to Huel, I was working in the bodybuilding and fitness world, mm. both in promotion of uh, bodybuilding and strength events and in the nutrition world and, and running a website, which was, was busy in its time. Um, and back then, all I wanted to do was get big muscles. Yeah, I was in um, early 20s. You know, that was all that mattered. And so I ate lots of food, tried to gain weight, you know, skinny, nine stone um, teenager. Yeah, you, don't, you guys don't talk stone. 14 pounds to a stone, yeah. work that out. Um, uh, and then um, I just wanted to get get bigger. It worked, it took me a while, but it worked. I got bigger and stronger and, you know, I, I, I got there. But more recently, I'm 49 now, by the way, I was 49 last week. So um, I, I look at things differently. Look, performance nutrition isn't just about physical performance. It's about mental performance, Okay. So as, as a sideline to nutrition, I like to amateurly study neuroscience and endocrinology in respect of appetite and health. And I've also a little bit of philosophy in there as well. So the, you know, the Stoics, uh, Marcus Aurelius and the, the philosophy, I find that very interesting. And modern neuroscience is really rubber stamping what they were telling us 2,000 odd years ago. Mm. And so I find that things like intermittent fasting are interesting from a physiological perspective, you know, the, the um, you know, there's evidence that it helps weight control and it reduces body fat and there's physiological benefits associated with longevity, which at my age, I have to start thinking about. <laughs> but also, it's also, you know, I wake up wake in the morning, if I'm having a morning workout, I'm hungry. I want to eat. Mm. Yeah. But there's, it teaches resilience by trying to hold back a bit. Right. After you've had cold showers and saunas and everything as well and done other things that are trying to hold yourself back. So... You can build strength in um, in yourself and you know, and and in the mind, mm. um, and obviously, I'm very fortunate. I've got Huel as part of my my dietary regime as well. Yeah, well, that's very fair, and it's a good point. Is you're teaching resilience, right? So you're helping that neuroplasticity yeah. in your brain, and and telling yourself, oh, I need to wait that extra hour to have the food, or you know, whatever it is. So that's a very fair point, especially uh, for athletes and weekend warriors as well. Now, Sridivi, what does the road ahead look like for performance nutrition? Uh, yeah, so uh, as uh, you know, the market has, as I mentioned previously, the market has opened its arm to the general consumer, right? So in the past five years, counting from 2015, what we have seen is that the launches of plant protein products doubled in the past five years. Mm. And we are expecting almost double digit growth for around 11% in the next coming five years for the overall market as a whole. So this information alone indicates how strongly the market is uh, you know, being accepted by the consumers as a whole. So uh, one of the uh, cornerstone of the current consumer is the concept is that you are what you eat. So everybody is really conscious about what goes into the body. Everybody wants to know what's uh, in the food that you're eating. Everybody wants to eat as clean as possible, as natural as possible, as green as possible. So all of these factors have also trickled into the performance nutrition market itself. So you've uh, you have companies, you have, you have brands like Huel, who have you know have really made their position and you know carved out a niche position for themselves as the you know vegan, cruelty-free, GMO-free products that they're offering in the performance nutrition space. You have companies like the Kind Bar in the USA who have like made from real food as their tagline for their products. So, so all of these kind of, uh, you know, natural and uh, clean and uh, additive free would be the main claims that you would find in the performance nutrition products moving forward. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, there is one challenge that the uh, market has to tackle, which is, uh, which is, uh, I would say it's not a huge challenge. It is a very small challenge from the production point of view, if you would say, is that there are some off nodes that come when you're 
when you're adding these plant proteins into the products because dairy, dairy is obviously sweeter than plants, right? So you have some sort of off nodes that may come up when you're consuming these kind of plant-based products. So uh, the industry is yet to tackle that fully. There are uh, brands, you know, there are consumers who claim that they have found brands who have met those kind of uh, benchmarks, those kind of standards in, in terms of the taste. But that is one small issue that the uh, industry would need to tackle. And, you know, if that is uh, cleared out, the industry is going to shoot up exponentially, uh, even much more greater than our predictions from what we have seen in the yeah. research. Yeah, and as a follow-up to that, is there certain ingredients that uh, consumers and specifically athletes and looking for performance nutrition that they're looking for in a plant-based product? Uh, so uh, uh, the the concept, uh, as I guess Lauren Lauren mentioned earlier, it has been uh, it's it's not just a, 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 a performance, uh, and it it has turned into the concept of a holistic and an optim optimum nutrition of your body functioning. So uh, the uh, you know whatever ingredient that would have uh, influence on that is definitely going to be in demand. So you will have all sorts of vitamins, minerals, omega-3s. Then another uh, popping ingredient is the medium chain triglycerides. So these are the best fats available right now. These are the hottest fats available right now. Everybody wants to uh, use them in their products. So these kind of uh, ingredients that would promote the overall wellness, the physical and mental and emotional wellness, you know, all three are to be balanced. So these kind of ingredients would definitely be the one that would be in demand. Hmm. That makes sense. So we're moving towards optimizing everything, you know, body, mind, spirit, yeah, as, as James touched on. And James, yeah. obviously as a manufacturer and consumer yourself of your own product, how does this translate to Huel? Um, I'm, I'm very cautious when I hear the term food trends, by the way. Mm. I don't like to follow what people want because they could be skewed by bad science. Look, I'm, I'm a scientist. Okay, and Huel, our brand, we're not a follower. We're, we're okay. We're only six years old. We're still small, but I'm gonna let me brag for a minute, please. We're selling over eighty countries. <laughs> brag away, mate. It's fine. <laughs> we've um, we've made well over a uh, hundred million dollars per per year. That's our, our turnover now. Um, and in six years old, we've gone from two of us to 170 employees. Wow. Okay, so we've established ourselves very quickly, and people hear about us now in. In, in the, the sports nutrition world and conventional nutrition world. Obviously, we've got, we were in the UK two years prior to being in America, but, and you've got a lot bigger country over there. But, you know, we, we, we've got a good presence in the UK and we're getting a really good presence in America. So I'd like to think, maybe arrogantly, that people listen to us now, okay? We, we need, at Hill, we need to be ahead of a curve, ahead of, ahead of the curve in knowing what sound science, not pseudoscience, mm. Um, is telling us, okay? And that doesn't mean, sound science doesn't just, just mean there's been one paper that showed X does Y, okay? That's not, repli you know, the replication is a, is a big thing in science. So we need to be ahead of the curve on that. And if people come to our website, Huel.com, I don't just want them to come there and buy Huel. Obviously, that's great if they do, but I want them to come to the website as a, as a source of information. We've got loads of great articles on there that, um, that, that gives some really good information from, from basic to slightly more advanced on different areas of nutrition. Yes, they're about our ingredients. We've got more general ones as well. I mentioned intermittent fasting. We've got, got one on that. And sustainability is key, key to us, so much so that we're just not nutrition, we're sustainable nutrition. You know, we, we are a plant-based product. We're, it's really important to us that we produce something that's ethical and with minimal impact on the environment. That's part of our mission statement that everything we do has to be in that space. So um, our in ingredients we use have to accommodate that. However, and the 3 dv mentioned MCTs, the medium chain triglycerides, we do have them in most of our products. Mm. We had them in from day one. We weren't following a trend from that. They were there because I felt um, that the good, good nutritional um, need for that. They're, they're uh, absorbed and metabolized slightly different to the long chain triglycerides. Um, and... Um, that they're really key. Now, ours are derived from, from coconut because they can come from palm. And obviously there's a concern that most of the palm supply 
isn't sustainable. I know there are certain palm plantations that are sustainable, but there's a very negative image of palm, isn't there at the moment? It's, it's demonized. So we can get them equally well from, from coconuts that are sustainably sourced. So there's a lot we've got to think of. Just to summarize what I just said there, we've, we've, we, we don't want to be followers, we want to be leaders. So we don't just follow what people want. We want to educate people in what science is telling them that's best for them. Yeah, well, that, that's nice that you're a young leader and not a follower. And then pe people can go to your website that, and they can find information, obviously just on, you know, on your ingredients, but additional resources as well, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, in the guides and articles section. Brilliant. Lauren, uh, from your point of view, what is the pulse on uh, clean and sustainability when choosing a product? Once again, that's going to that's gonna vary over a lot of things. That's going to vary between sports. Um, that's going to vary ownership, you know, coaching, um, personnel like myself. But here's, here's the thing that I, I think we're, we're all touching around in terms of athletic performance, but we haven't really said, and I wanted to make sure that this is very clear. The thing that I love about Huel is, and, and James, you kind of alluded to this, it's a meal. You just add water. <laughs> cold water or warm water and you have a complete nutritional supplement or substitute right because those are two different things so that's very very important and the most important part of that is time because if i'm working out six to ten hours a day or training or playing or whatever we want to call it there is a time factor in there where i'm going to promote or educate my clientele on a product that is good for them, that gets them des the desired result, and most importantly is, is time management effective. Mm. Because if someone is training up to 10 hours a day, they don't necessarily have, unless they have a professional chef, some do, which is a whole nother story. Right. Um, but you know, a lot of times what, what you run into with, with elite athletes and celebrities is they like to stop and pick up junk. Well, we know now that in whatever you put in your body eventually comes out of your body. And when you turn it in energy and that makes you a little bit less efficient, you may not recover as well. You may sleep poorly because of what you're putting in your body. So as long as something is clean and sustainable, it's very easy for me to take a product like a Huel and be able to go through each individual ingredient because we know what they all are. And I love that about you guys, James, by the way. Um, and give this to a client and say, this is what you need to do. And guess what? It only takes 45 seconds. And that's gonna be very, very important. Also when you're training multiple times a day because we know that the nutrient window is a big deal. Yeah, so, and that's a huge right. point, man, because you talked about professional athlete versus weekend warrior versus somebody that just wants to aesthetically look good. And to James's point, that's why they have so many you know, different products. If you're working out six or 10 hours a day, you need to take that nutrition in, right? Uh, let it absorb so you can get your next session in, so you can have your massage therapist or PT or whoever um, help you recover so you can get ready for that, that next exercise section, uh, session, correct? Now, Shridevi, uh, you're a resident fortune teller, uh, as we like to say. <laughs> what are the other uh, interesting areas with performance nutrition? So uh, uh, we have been uh, closely looking at performance nutrition for quite some time because we have seen a lot of activities in the space. And we have uncovered that there are three major trends that, would, uh, that, that are going to mainly impact the whole performance nutrition market. So the first thing which uh, we have not touched based upon as of now is uh, the ability to have customized products. So everybody is concerned about what they are having, how much are they having, what is the impact of the supplement or the protein powder that they are consuming. So, and they want to modulate that so as the output is optimum, the body figure or the body fat, whatever they want to achieve is optimum. So. Consumers are willing to have the uh, option where they could customize the ingredients themselves. Not, not to, you know, 100% is not possible. However, there may be options where they can modulate the protein content or some fat content. So those kind of customization is in demand. Consumers are really interested to have such kind of products. So that will definitely, uh, you know, give rise to 
interesting additives, interesting proteins, and you know, the list goes on. So that is the first major trend that we have observed. The second major trend, as uh, we have all been discussing, is you know, eating clean, eating healthy, and eating green. So natural ingredients with the minimum amount of additives is the way to go because consumers don't, uh, you know, they're not concerned about any synthetic additives anymore. They want to eat as healthy as possible, as natural as possible. So that is the second major trend that we've seen. And the third major trend uh, is the uh, holistic wellness uh, quotient of uh, what we'd like to call as a wellness quotient of the product. Because, you know, the, for the past one and a half years, or probably maybe two, we don't know how long this is gonna go, everybody has been locked up. So we need to have uh, uh, products that will uplift the overall nutritional value of our food products, right? We, we, we need additional supplements from these products. So we need uh, all sorts of vi vitamins, minerals, whatever additional uh, nutrients you can consume should be uh, you know, encompassed in such a way that it's easily consumable, like Huel's products, for example. So these are the three major trends that we see are, are going to change the face of the performance nutrition product in the future. Perfect. And that's a nice segue. Thank you for that. You should be hosting this segment. Uh, James, <laughs> James, what's on deck for Huel? Um, we've got some, we've got the products I've mentioned. Um, and like, like I said, we've grown very quickly. We're only, th we're only six years old. And three years ago, yeah, we had the, the Huel bar, but we really only had the one Huel powder, which was the one in the white pouch. And obviously, Huel was great, but it, it, was, it had its limitation at that point. Mm. It was what it was. If somebody wanted a bit more protein, they'd have to mix some other protein powder in. If they wanted lower carb, it, that wouldn't be an option. So when we bought the Huel Black Edition, and now more recently the Huel Complete Protein, we've got not just three options, we've got multiple options because you can combine, combine them in different ways. You can hack your own Huel with Huel, if you like, um, which is what I do personally. Yeah. Um, but, but also, um, Sri Devi mentioned uh, a while ago about the the off notes with some of the protein powders that's really important i think because it's challenging okay they can be really yeah. challenging and pea protein is very nutritious and relative to other plant proteins it's quite affordable so it's the one you want to be using in, in your portfolio and more recently we've brought in hemp protein as well but we've also brought in the fiber bean protein in our complete protein product because it is more palatable there's less off notes and our mpd um team tell me it's a lot smoother and easier easier to develop on and on those guys our mpd team at yule are excellent okay we've got you know several people in there now where we're growing and they can play around with stuff and these off notes that, that you mentioned they seem to have done a cracking job in getting in, in masking them and getting rid of them so that they're a non-issue which, which is great so we've got some now we've got more people at yule we can be more innovative we can look at more protein sources we are talking to companies around the world who are on, on the cusp of new innovations. We're, we're on their radar, we're having you know, um, good conversations with them. So when, when they launch their, um, their products, um, then, then we, we can be one of the first to have them. But we're looking at new types of products as well. I obviously can't say what they are because that's you know, trade secrets, but we're playing, playing with more now, even if we don't release them all. So there's gonna be more, you know, to grab, grab a wider variety of people. And, and remember, Huel's not just about athletes, although athletes really benefit from it. So yeah, we've got lots going on. Very, very busy, but very, very fun. Amazing, I think I'm gonna use cracking in my daily language much more often. Okay. I mean, you just sound much better. <laughs> uh, Lauren and I are just stuck in the States. We don't have you know, as much of an eloquent yeah. accent as the both of you. Uh, I just wanna say thank you all for um, joining me. It, it's been such a pleasure, thank you so much. Thanks, really enjoyed it. Thank you for having us. Thank you, it was a great session. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for this talk session on professional performance nutrition on Talking Plant Protein. Mm -hmm.